everyone. Welcome to Hue at Home. Well, today we're going to find out what's so funny about Saskatchewan. And well, no, we have comedian Kelly Taylor here. It's so nice to have you here on Hue at Home. And I know, Kelly, we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of Rumors Comedy Club. So how does it feel to be one of the like prestigious guests to be part of that celebration? Oh, it's, uh, it's an honor because if you look at that lineup, they're all... Uh big time comics so to be in that lineup is uh that's a big time honor so i'm excited to get there and see all the guys and uh, have a great time that weekend well we can only imagine can, car can hardly wait but let's talk about you kelly how does one become a comedian do you go to school <laughs> for it uh well i i guess everyone would have their own story of how they become a comedian mine's out of necessity i can't do anything else uh <laughs> i'm not I'm not very smart at anything, so uh, making people laugh always seemed like the easiest thing I could do. And then I always just knew I wanted to do it. And then finally, when I turned uh, like when I turned 19, the very first thing I did was I went to a comedy club that night, and I was like, oh, and I was just mesmerized. I was like, oh man, what, what a life that would be. And then it, I waited a few years, and then uh, finally took the plunge and got on stage, and it went went pretty good. And then just kept escalating, and then. Uh, Kind of went from there, and that that was it. I was like, oh, now it's like a now it's kind of like a holiday for life. Well, there is some there is some shows that aren't uh, a holiday. I'll tell you that. Well, and okay, let's talk about that. Those shows that don't go according to plan. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Oh, like it, at the beginning, I remember hearing from a guy is like, take take every show you can get. Like, don't try to do the shows that are made for you because you won't get better. You get better when you're doing the tough shows, the ones that are hard to do. So I did that. I would take every show there was, and you could tell some shows right when you walk in, you're like, oh, this is set up to fail. Like I would do shows and they come in like, oh, we're a small crowd. I think you needed a sound system. I was like, oh, I'm like, well, where do you want me? They're like over there. I was like, oh, in the dark corner behind the buffet. So you're like, this is going to be a, a tough sell. And so those are some uh, tough ones. As you, as you continue on doing comedy, like now when people message or, do things for shows like you know let's have a stage let's have a sound system let's do this as opposed to uh like sometimes they'll they'll think it's a good idea let's oh i want to do it as a surprise for my staff and like i don't know if your staff wants to hear stand up right now people people the best crowds are the ones like going to rumors that are at, they want to go to a comedy club and see a show so uh, hopefully those shows are few and far between those real bad ones but there's definitely <laughs> a lot of them at the beginning well, it's interesting because you obviously now you're a seasoned pro. Besides doing the comedy shows, you do corporate events, you do sporting events, you have maybe younger college crowds. How do you size up your audience and know what your material material is going to be like? Yeah, that comes uh, definitely with the experience. Uh, like at the beginning, when you first start comedy, you obviously don't have as much material, so you're kind of married to that material. And at the beginning, I would go into a show and say I was doing, I started out with lots of bars. And like, oh, this is starting to work because I was doing bars all the time. And then you start getting into a show and it was an older show when I was a younger comic. I was like, in my head, I was like, oh man, I don't know if this is going to fly here tonight. So then you have to evolve and you have to get more material and more material. And the more you do it and the more material you get, you can come into a crowd and say you have three hours of material when you're on stage and kind of look and then you get, it's like a, as we're talking sometimes, we're filing, like, let's go to this joke. And then did that one work good? Oh, I got another one that's like that. We can tag that together. So sometimes when we're talking, we're not actually there. We're, we can be out. <laughs> we're out this cloud picking things and going like that. And you're, like, trying to figure it all out. Like, even when I did I did Canadian colleges for a year, Canadian colleges, uh, like it was almost like I was younger then. So it was like a party. There was, it was a, there was lots of alcohol because the drinking age is only 18, 19. And then I did that for one year. Then I went to the U.S. where the drinking age is 21. And the comedy show was like, it was an alternative to get the kids that weren't drinking. So if I came in with like a party show, they're like, what? So within a year of doing those American colleges, I called it, I wrote my nerd hour. Like I was closing with like board game jokes and coloring. And it was like, so you just started evolving to what will fit that crowd. And uh, the more shows you do and the different crowds you do only helps you out in the long run because you start... Uh, adapting it's like survival <laughs> it certainly is well this is kind of fascinating knowing all this so it's almost like being a singer songwriter right like do you have a notebook by your bedside wake <laughs> up like at two in the morning and something shoots through your brain and you have to write it down 
Yeah, you used to, or then you lay in bed, you try to tell yourself, you'll remember it, you remember, then you wake up, like, I I don't remember that at all, or my scribbling, I'll scribble something down, and I was like, what was this? I, I don't know what this is, I don't know what's funny in this. And that's usually how I do anything, it's just a jot note. Like, I don't write out big chunks. I know a lot of comics will, like, uh, you'll get your Seinfelds and your Gaffigans that take out every nuance, every word. Whereas I try to uh, take a premise and then I let the crowd, I'll try it out. And then I let, it's almost like the crowd can feed me where to go with the joke. Because sometimes you think something's funny and you'll say it and you're like, oh, I thought the laugh would be there. And then sometimes you'll say something and there's a laugh there and you're like, oh, that's the direction I got to go. And then it kind of goes down that way and you figure it out the more you do it. And like anything, practice uh, makes anything better. It's in hockey, any sport or just in stand up or anything in general. Who do you find it easier with, sporting crowds or the corporate real world? <laughs> uh, the, the sporting crowds are all different because, like, sometimes I got known for doing, I did uh, uh, hockey functions, and a lot of hockey guys, they chirp each other on the ice. So that's kind of their thing. So I did one show where I did that. Like, I kind of went through who, which hockey guys were all there, and I started picking, like, okay, that's a little bit of a bird. That's a little bit of a bird. So I'll kind of go out of like that, like a little bit of a roast. And then I did that, and then these guys, they love that. They're like, oh, yeah. So then the next time they come through, they're like, hey, could, like, you're going to be, who you making? I can't wait for you to make fun of them again. I was like, well, I already made fun of that guy. i got to find something new to make. And then some of these, I was like, oh, this is getting pretty offside. I, I don't know if I'm comfortable even saying this. So <laughs> those are fun that way. And uh, I almost get to feel like the big brother. Like my brothers are like that. You know, you burn people and that. And uh, the corporate ones, you know, as long as it's a good setup show, uh, mm -hmm. That, that's all that matters. Some people are like, oh, I don't, I, I don't want to cater and be a clean comic. I was like, to me, doing clean comedy, edgy comedy, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a, a good crowd that's listening, I'm happy to do uh, either way. And so what is life like for you now? You said you're on the road right now. You're in Cranbrook. Is it still a lot of traveling to every niche and corner of the country? <clears throat> it, it is. Uh, like, there's definitely a balance to it. Uh, I have four kids, so uh, if I'm at home too long, then I'm not really providing for my family. And then when I'm on the road too long, it's like, you know, I miss a lot of a lot of sporting events and being with my family. So when I get that right balance, that's when it's, uh, that's when it's good. But uh, I still enjoy the road. I'm like a little kid. Every time I check into a hotel, like it doesn't get old. I, I get excited. I get in there. It's like, I'm going to walk. Like even yesterday, I hadn't been on the road for a while, and now I'm on the road for 12 days. I was like, I have a list of what movies I want to watch. But then I have to make it sound stressful to my wife. Like, oh, I was working all day on just writing and doing this, but I was actually <laughs> watching movies and taking it easy and doing yoga. <laughs> uh, and she knows exactly what you're doing. But uh, I'm sure you get payback for it when you get home. Um, the family life, how much has that influenced part of your humor? Oh, yeah, because it's uh, every comic is going to be... Uh, product of their environment so like if you don't have any kids you're obviously I'm going to talk about it and I never sat out when I first started comedy be like oh I'm going to do a comic that's going to talk about kids because at the beginning uh, when I first started comedy I just had like my wife was just pregnant so I didn't have any kid material and just as you evolve and then you end up having four kids that you obviously get the material of having four kids and then you, you do that and you talk about that and you're upraising sometimes I'll do shows and people just come up and they'll have kids the same age as mine and it's like, you know, that's a real connection to them. They'll just sit there like, oh, my God, are you, you live in my household? You, is that what it's like? And I was like, that's good if you can connect and, and it feels like it's real to them. Like, uh, you know, you're like, oh, man, I was thinking that, but I never said it out loud. Like, that's kind of, I like those connections where people are like, yeah, exactly. Sometimes I do shows and instead of people laughing, I just hear people like, oh, so true. Oh, so true. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then that's, yeah, you know, you're on a roll. <laughs> yeah. And so how many times have you gone to your kids' sporting event and someone says, Oh, come on, Kelly, tell us a joke. Oh, that. Uh, and then I just tell them I'm off the clock. I can't do it. I don't go up to friends that are mechanics. Like, hey, Jeff, you're here. Do you mind uh, looking at my radiator right now? <laughs> so, uh, but some people, it usually, because I know the people, it's not as bad, but some people really want a joke. And I was like, Oh, and then they tell you a street joke, and you're like, that that's not how it works. I'm doing stand up. I'm not memorizing street jokes. I'm not gonna and then this guy will have a real good street joke and a lot of people laugh, like, Oh, come on, Taylor, what do you got? And I was like, well, I don't know, I don't have a street joke, I'm a professional. I don't just memorize street jokes. <laughs> okay, so with four kids, do you think 
maybe all of them, or at least maybe one might follow in your footsteps. Who has a funny bone in the family besides yourself? Oh, it's that's it. That's the easiest question, right? To my uh, youngest, my youngest is it's uh, crazy, uh, like fun. I, I don't know because I'm the youngest of five, maybe to get the attention, but. He did this character of he might have been seven or eight and we were around a fire and he puts on like this raspy voice and we don't know where it came from. And he was like an insult comic and he was going around the fire, like burning people. And then he literally, he ran out of things to say. And then, you know, you'll have a newspaper start your fire. And he's the funny thing is like when comics are very true, it, you can like that. That's a beautiful thing on stage It's when they're hiding things. And he, and he even just admits like, I'm out of things to talk about. And he grabs the newspaper, and then he sees a picture of someone, and then just starts ripping them. And you're like, "Oh my god!" Like he's improving as he goes. And then word got around that he did this, and then he ended up doing like 70 people around a, a campfire in Waska Sioux, and there's all ages from five to 70, which is a n not an easy crowd to do. And when people started to yelp things at him, he would start burning them, and then people try to record. He's like, "Hey, no, no recording, no devices," and he was just like on fire. And I was like. Oh my! I, I as a comic, I was like, "Oh, that's impressive!" So <laughs> that would be the one I'd be. Uh, I'd put all my chips in on that one. Well, that'd be a nice transition for you to become his agent, right? You'd know oh, all the spots to go. Exactly. <laughs> I'll take a cut off that. Keep bucket of it. I'll just put myself on the show. That I could uh, sail into the sunset, and retire like that with my boy. That'd be the best. Uh, well, maybe you should bring him to the anniversary tour. <laughs> Oh, well, if there's a hockey game in there, too, I, I usually try yes. to bring them on there and then yeah. have tag in a hockey game. So, like, getting back now to Winnipeg, um, what is it about Winnipeg that you like or maybe don't like? You know, it, and I'm not saying it just because I'm coming to Winnipeg, but I, people will ask, because that's a, a common question, like, where's your favorite place to perform? Where's your... And, it, and you know, like anything, like the Toronto or Vancouver usually thinks they're the best. I love Winnipeg. The Winnipeg crowds are always great. I don't know if it's just uh, like a good blue collar. Like from Tuesday and Tuesday and Wednesday in comedy clubs are notoriously the worst day. Like it's usually open mics and it's just comics telling jokes to other comics. But Tyler runs um, the club, has it like there'll be deals, like say it's two for one Tuesday or something. And Winnipegers, they love a good deal. I know that. <laughs> so, or Wednesday's a burger to, at, a, at a ticket. So the club's packed on Tuesday and Wednesday and you're like, well, this feels like a Saturday in here. So it's always great. And then Winnipeg has a lot of great places to eat. Like, since I'm on the road, I'm not cooking in that. So we go around and I experience the whole city. And and I usually try to get in a hockey game. So every time I go there, like I literally, my wife knows how much I love Winnipeg too. I have to make it sound like I'm working. I was like, oh, it's going to be a tough grind. But I, I love it. I uh, And I ha I've been doing it so long now and it's there's always things on your calendar that you're like kind of dread like ah oh, that one's gonna be a tough show that one and Winnipeg is just every time it's on my when I see it on the calendar I can't I can't wait I just love it well we are thanking you so much for sharing that love for Winnipeg because you know <laughs> uh, yeah well you know I didn't talk about well at least you're from Saskatoon and not Regina right and oh yeah. Prince Albert even I'm even <laughs> further away than both of them yeah <laughs> okay, well, no wonder you get along so well with us here in Winnipeg. But <laughs> yeah, you know, there it is. It's, it's the North Sask. We get along with the Winnipeggers real well. Yes, yes. Kelly, uh, if people want to come out and see your shows besides here in Winnipeg, where can they go for all that info? Oh, I'm one of the, I got a kellytaylor.biz. I don't even know if anyone else has a .biz website, but .com and .ca were gone. I don't know who those Kelly Taylors are, but I'm at uh, .biz, and you can check out... Uh, some shows there so i'll be coming in and for the winnipeg people i come october 4th 5th and then i'm back in march doing the comedy club for a week too so wow you can be there yeah okay that's a full slate of kelly taylor thank you so <laughs> yeah. much kelly all the best for this year thank you so much thanks for having me looking forward to getting there